Dora Nibikoko Ibadi. Our actress, our producer, happens every day. And it can happen to anyone. Hello and welcome to another edition of the Youth Empowerment Show. My name is Theodora Ibekwe Oyebade, your usual host. And today we're going to be talking about empowering youth on different stuff. I've got my guests who are going to be doing that teaching. The first guest is going to come on board. I will let them introduce themselves and talk about what they want the youth to know. So it's all about empowering the youth. But before our first guests will come on board to empower the youth, let's go on a short break. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the show after the break. Don't touch that dial. I'll be back in a minute. My name is Ramato Koruma. I'm a Nollywood actress. I'm a talk show host and I'm also a procurement partner working for the NHS. Today I'm going to be talking about procurement and then I'll be sharing with you seven procurement processes that you can implement in your business. Procurement is the act of obtaining goods or services. Procure from the word procurement simply means to buy. I see procurement as a task. It can be the buying of products or services and also ensuring that the suppliers comply with legal and company rights. Procurement deals with the internal processes, such as finding suppliers and making sure that those suppliers are compliant. I will be sharing with you seven steps of a procurement process. So it doesn't matter the type or the size of business that you have, these steps can be implemented. How the procurement process looks like is dependent on the size and budget of your business because there is no one size fits all approach. So you just have to do what's best for your business and make sure that you tailor the procurement process according to your business. A strong procurement process is key to the financial efficiency of any business. It aids in paying the right price for the right product. The first step of the procurement process is to identify the goods or services needed. Before you start a business, definitely you must have thought about the type of goods or services that you want to sell. So the procurement process does not start until you've made that decision to buy. You need to know exactly the type of goods or services that you want to sell and then you have to decide how you want to sell. So this process starts from the moment you decide on buying your products or services. That's where the procurement process starts. The second step um, of a procurement process is to consider a list of suppliers. So I'm gonna use a pen as an example. So if you want to start selling pen, the first thing you have to do, you need to look for suppliers that can supply you the pens that you want to sell. So what you do is you create a list of suppliers wherein you make sure that those suppliers on your list are suppliers that are accountable, you need to consider their ethics. You need to also make sure that there are suppliers that can be trusted. Most importantly, you need to make sure that there are suppliers that are compliant. The third step is to negotiate contract terms with the selected suppliers. So from the list that you've created on the second step, what you do is that you reach out to the suppliers and make sure that the prices that they have set for their products are prices that you can afford another issue is that sometimes there are suppliers that will tell you that you need to order a minimum quantity of 100 and let's say you are looking out to sell 50 pence but now the minimum order is 100 so what you do you need to reach out to those suppliers and make sure that their terms and conditions suit your business because at the end of the day if you have a number of suppliers which have a minimum 
quantity of 100 and what you're looking for is 50 that is something that would definitely not suit your business so what you have to do make a list of suppliers and make sure you contact them and negotiate those terms the fourth stage is finalize the purchase order this order contains the details of the product, the quantity, and the agreed price. The purchase order is um, something that you send to the supplier. So once you send a purchase order to the supplier, you would then receive an invoice from the supplier. So the information on the purchase order is being sent and then the supplier will now go to the purchase order and then create an invoice based on the information that you've provided and agreed upon. The fifth step is receive invoice and process payment this stage what happens is that you receive um, an invoice from the supplier you need to cross check the invoice and make sure that all the information that are on the invoice are information that you and the supplier have agreed upon For example now let's say um, you've agreed that the supplier will give you a discount of five percent and that information has not been included in the invoice you need to go back to the supplier and say okay fine where is the discount that you've already agreed to give me you need to make sure that all um, the information that are on the invoice, the information that are accurate. So at this point, if all the information are correct, then you can now move forward and make payments. The sixth step is delivery and audit of the order. So at this step, you receive your delivered items. What happens is that it's at this step that you get to know if the supplier is trusted and if the supplier is a supplier that you can use for future purchases. So for an example now, some suppliers will tell you that you will receive your items in 10 working days and let's say they are not able to meet that requirement and they get to send you your products in 20 working days. So at that point, you know that this supplier is a supplier that I cannot trust in terms of timing because they will not be able to deliver. So at this point, you now go back to the list of suppliers you created in the second step. So you can now try to use another supplier just to see if that supplier will be able to meet the timing. So this step will help you to recognize if the supplier is a supplier that you need to use in the future so also need to audit your order and make sure the order is in accordance to your business needs that's a very important factor the seventh and final step is to maintain accurate record of invoices at this step what happens is that you make sure that you file all your invoices and keep them let's say now that you are selling pens and you decide not to sell pens anymore and then let's say 12 months down the line you want to start selling pens again. What happens is that because you have an accurate filing record of invoices, you can always go back to your invoices and then see what supplier you want to use. For example, now there are different types of pen. Let's say you want to start selling black pens. So you now go and check your invoices and see what supplier was the supplier that supplied you the pens that you've initially bought in the past and you can always use those information to reorder from that same supplier which makes things very very easy for you i hope the information that i've shared with you can help your procurement needs for your business thank you very much for listening hi there my name is theodora ibekwe oibade and i'm the chief executive officer of House of Theodora. I am super excited to introduce this luxury brand to the world. We design outfits using clear crystals, rhinestones, blings, you name it. It is your one-stop shop for anything bling. We've got it. But you know what? We've got one top secret. Shh, don't tell anyone. Our branded t-shirts are the best. Check them out on Instagram at House of Theodora London. You cannot make any mistake. Inbox us your order. See you then. Hello and thank you Ramatu for that. I quite enjoyed that piece. Thank you for empowering the youth. And then um, we we'll move on to the next guest who is also going to teach the youth or rather empower them on 
a different thing. Let's watch and see what our next guest is going to talk about. Hi everyone, my name is Irene Eriboani. I'm the CEO and founder of Ebony Ambassador CIC. Ebony Ambassador CIC is a community interest company with the main aim to empower um, people through skills. I will be um, teaching you guys how to make a simple skate with prints. And I've actually done my measurement because of the time that I've got. So the, the width is 22 and the length is um, 67. So the longer the length, the more print that you will have. So this is what I've got. You can see how long it is. But I'm going to make a skirt quickly. And uh, the first thing to do is to put the skirt together. Make sure you know where is actually the front and the back of the material. So I'm going to put this together. So the back will be outside. So I'll put this together like this. So we've got two parts of it at the moment. So I need to sew this edge down. So I've already thread my needle. So I'm going to sew this place that the shorter bit of the material, I'm going to sew it now quickly. So for those that don't know what we do, we are actually known for um, a beauty and creativity pageant that we do on a yearly basis. And that pageant is also to empower people through skills. I would do in a fast stitches, like leaving a lot of gap, but on your own, it should be close to each other. But I want to quickly illustrate how to make a skirt as quick as I can. Um, as I said once again, we're making a skirt, a short skirt with a lot of prints. Here I've got a needle, I've got thread, I've got elastic, and I've got... Um, uh, pinking, spears, I'll show you what I use that for, and I've got scissors and I've got tape. So these things are things that you need to make a skirt and the material that I'm working on at the moment. So as I said, the stitches are a bit big because I want to quickly work within the time um, I was um, given. So yeah, I'm actually done with this other side. So I want to tie the thread and um, So, sorry, this, that's one of the reasons why you shouldn't have um, the thread too long because it, if it is, it actually locks itself. So, we've actually sewn the side. So, my scissors is here. I'm going to cut this off now. So, to get the skirt, I need to fold um, the very top. That's my waist. So you might be wondering why I did not take the waist measurement or take the hip or the length measurement. It is not needed in um, the kind of skirts that I want to show you guys today. As I said, we're making a uh, printed skirt. So I will be folding here in, in this way. I'm folding it in. This is the elastic I've got and the elastic will be going in. So I'm folding it in, looking at the size of elastic that I've got. So if it's a tiny elastic, I will make the folding a bit um, small, but because the elastic is a bit wide, so I'll make the folding um, wide. So as I fold, I need to sew quickly, like holding. As I said, I'm giving um, space, knowing that um, I have few time here to show you how to make a skirt. So I will sew the folded bit round just for my elastic to go in. So I'm trying to be as fast as I can. So as I said, I'm still holding it down to where I want to um, add the, the elastic. So I want to be fast. Yep, I'm almost there. So again, I'm giving it a bit of um, space because I'm more concerned about the end of what I'm doing and my time is quite short. But you will see what I can do with this few time that I've got. Um, and it's something that you could look at again 
you can come back and watch it again and you see what you can make um of this video or try to do what i am doing at the moment so it's still folding the the beads that's your waist i'm still folding it in order for me to um put the elastic and once i put the elastic then i have to pull the elastic to fit my waist so once that is done my skirt is ready okay i need to thread the needle again i'm running out of thread so i'll do that quickly i'm using a red thread so you could choose to use any thread any um, thread color in the fabric that you're working with so as i've got red so i'm using red so i've actually thread this quickly i don't really have that much time i need to be fast so i've just thread just thread the needle again and i will continue the folding i need to fold this round for the uh, elastic to go through so i'm still sewing the waist i'm still on the waist okay again my name is irene eribo i'm the ceo and founder of miss ebony ambassador uk pageant and the pageant is actually to empower the contestant through skills. So we run skills from hair braiding to sewing, beading, makeup, rhinestone embellishment, and baking. So back to what I'm doing at the moment. I'm trying to sew the waist in order for me to put the elastic through. So I will be done in a few minutes. I'm almost there. I'm almost at the end, as I said. I'm actually giving a lot of gap, but if you are to sew this with a needle, you need to be, you need to be very, um, the gap you should leave shouldn't be too wide. So once again, we're trying to make a skirt, an easy skirt with a lot of print. So um, I choose this color because it's quite bright and um we're in summer so it would be nice to wear something colorful i'm almost done with um what i'm doing at the moment where i need to add the elastic and you'll see the finishing so you actually be surprised what we could do um, with this short period of time and i know for the young ones watching me it's something you can do when you are less busy and um You'll be proud that you did this because it's quite simple to see that you could do this within a short period of time. And um, yeah, gaining skills or transferring skills is what I love doing. So I do it with ease. So if it's something you pick interest in, just keep doing it. You don't know where it will take you to. Okay, I'm done with the folding for me to put the elastic. So I want to tie it again before I cut. So this is tied now. So I will get the elastic, which is this. As I said, I made the, the, the sewing a bit wide because of the elastic that I've got. So I'm making this skirt for myself. So what I will do quickly is to, um, I think this should be enough for my waist, but you could use your measure tape to check What's best for the waist and i've got this safety pin to pin this in in order to pass it through the space that i've made so so this will travel through the skirts as i said the wider the skirt the more um print that you have so you're going to see what prints we're going to have in um, having this um, size that we're using today as i said the length was um 67 um, and the width was 22 so you could use to use any size of your choice so it's coming out already as a skirt you will testify to it immediately i am done once again i want to say thank you for joining this simple um skirt making and I hope you learned something today. I'm almost there. Um, yeah.
so. So, so, so. So now I could take the safety pin off and I want to, um, let me see. Let me get it as wide as I want it to look like. So you just keep pulling, 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 pulling. So you could choose to tie, tie it, or you could choose to use the needle and sew the two um, elastic ends together. But I'll be tying it because of time. So I've actually tied it. So, and I'm going to turn the skirt because I've been working on the back. So I'm going to turn it now to the front. And this is what we've got. Okay, let me you just um, push it the way you want it for it to get the shape that you actually want. So this actually look too, um, so I could hold it a bit because it looks too loose. Okay, so I've got something like this now. So this is the skirt I just made. So as I said, the bigger the material, the more prints that you have. So this is actually the skirt I made. Isn't this lovely? So that's it from me. Thank you for watching. Bye. Flaunting my easy skirt that I made within 10 minutes. Yes, I mean 10 minutes. I made this skirt within 10 minutes. Thank you very much, Irene. Um, that was quite good, teaching, um, empowering the youth on how to make various things. Um, thank you so much. I enjoyed it and I've learned something from what you've just taught. And um, we've almost come to the end of the show, but before then, let us listen to um, Ambassador Tina, our usual, usual co-hosts every week. Hi, everyone. I'm going to talk about different ways we can empower ourselves in the comfort of our home and still make money. We don't necessarily need to do a nine to five job. Some people are making money and they are not doing nine to five job. You can stop, start by doing your, making, doing your research to find out what you really want to do. You can create a business, a drop shipping business, convoy online publishing where your own design is customized on jacket and other clothing. Why using a drop shipping services to create your own products similar to fulfillment Amazon? The FBA where the drop shipping services they ship your goods on your behalf to your prospective customers you see you don't really need to lift a finger from the comfort of your home you are making money you can set up a youtube channel as well if you are good at talking to people you can be a motivational or inspirational speaker depending on how good your content is you can make 10 to 500 pounds a day if you are good at cooking or you are good at making hair or a good at barbing hair you can create a flyer distribute it around your neighborhood and let them know that you provide mobile services in the comfort of their home. Yes, I know there's a lockdown, there's COVID. As the government is easing out those restrictions, it's, it's good to put your services out there so people can start calling you immediately they need your service. You can be a, a narrator. They are looking for audio book narrators. You can also make money by selling your unwanted goods on eBay. 
instead of chucking them in the bin. You make good money. Put them out there on eBay and people will buy. People making money, they don't have four heads. Some of them are like, most of them are like me and you. They are disciplined. For you to make money, you need to be focused, to be disciplined. And to research. Learn more on what you want to do. By so doing, trust me, this money will roll in, in the comfort of your home. I wish you all the best and let's make money. Thank you. Bye. Hi there. My name is Theodora Ibekwe Oyebade, a silver executive with Omega Pro. Welcome to this mini talk. Do you know that going digital is no longer an option? It is a default. It is also no longer news that the world is a global village. It is actually a reality. So on this note, I humbly introduce to you Omega Pro. In Omega Pro, we do forest trading. Are you ready for the journey now? If your answer is yes, then do not hesitate to contact me at COVID. 7047 at gmail.com. I repeat, COVID 7047 at gmail.com. See you on the journey. Thank you and goodbye. Right, we've now come to the end of today's show. I hope you all enjoyed the empowerment sessions by our different guests. Thank you very much to all the guests that have empowered the youth. Thank you, Ambassador Tina, as well. Thank you, everyone. And we've come to the end of today's show. We'll be back same time next week. Keep it locked on the Youth Empowerment Show. Hi everyone, my name is Aro Your Majesty Theodora Ubekwe Oyebade. Theodora, 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 Theodora,